Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Inside the U live postgame show following the Miami Hurricanes' 80-76 loss to Duke in the ACC semifinals. Miami drops to 23-10. and They will now await their fate for the NCAA tournament. Mo- everyone pretty much has them in, you know, making the tournament, so that'd be a great accomplishment for this team not expected to do well coming into the year. Turns in a year where they win 23 games, it looks like they're anywhere from 8 to 11 on the seeding, depending on where you look at. I'll have an article on the website very soon, probably tomorrow, about you know where what the latest projections has them at. But with this game, let, let's talk about some things. If you're new to this post-game show, we're going to go straight to Jim Laranega and players as soon as they're available with the Zoom post-game interviews. Um, it's being handled by the ACC tournament, or the ACC in general, and last game, Miami actually went first. They won, so maybe Duke will come out first if, if that's the protocols. We will probably go to Coach K, get his thoughts. I'm always interested in hearing opposing coaches on his, on their thoughts on it, so definitely we'll go to him as soon as he's there just for a little bit. Maybe not stick with it, but if that's available, we'll do that. Miami loses 80-76. to There's some things to get into with this one. And certainly with, with Miami's team, we've talked about this all season long, they are not a well-rounded team. They have their strengths. They play to their strengths most games. And then their weaknesses can sometimes pop up. And their weaknesses certainly popped up today, in particular on the interior. Unable to contain. Paulo Bancaro goes 8 for 10, finishes with 18 points, 11 rebounds. And, and also, you know, as a team, Duke – Finishes with 44 points in the paint. So quite a bit. That means 22 of their 29 shots that they made, uh, their field goals were, were in the paint. You know, certainly tough to to defend there. They also get 17 points off free throws. So free throws were a big difference in this one. Duke goes 77%, 17-22. to 22. Miami goes 6-12. to 12, Uncharacteristic of them to shoot that poorly, just to 50%. So... Big big games individually. I want to touch on these guys, Cam McGusty, especially in the second half. You know, and one thing we don't talk about all the time with Cam, but just his energy he always brings, the competitiveness. You know, he's not just a leading scorer, but I think the teammate, his teammates really look at him to, to carry him to, on an emotional level that they feel like they can con- compete with any of these teams. And, and you saw it, and you saw it throughout the game, kind of John and going back at not just Duke in this game, but – he does this most games. You know, he's always involved with a very passionate player, you know, with the celebrations or whatever that might be. But 24 points, 11 and 19 shooting. He had seven points at halftime, so a big second half with 17 points. Jordan Miller, this is great for Miami. Again, we're talking about guys stepping up in the post in postseason play. Obviously, the big game, the big layup there, the game winner in the first, you know, and yes, in the quarterfinals. Today he goes 17 and 13, 13 rebounds against a team that is very, you know, tall on in the interior. We touched on Ben Carroll, but Mark Williams as well, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. He finished with 10, 10 points there, or 10 rebounds, I'm sorry. But for Jordan Miller to grab 13, I thought that was big. You know, just kind of keeps Miami in it. And Miami was out-rebounded 40-31. to 31. That, you know, that margin's not terrible. It looked bad early. You know, Duke had three offensive rebounds on the opening possession Duke did finish with 12 offensive rebounds compared to Miami's 20 defensive rebounds. So that's not a good uh, ratio for Miami there. And certainly you saw the the big play kind of late. You know, Miami's trailing late. They're trying to, they do get a missed free throw. Sam Wardenberg is trying to box out Mark Williams and tries to tip it to a teammate, but just overmatched uh, down low and Duke was able to come down with it. It looks like we got, we might have Coach Laranega yep, and, and players here. We'll go straight there. Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead. Recording in progress. Thank you. 
All right, we're now ready to begin the Miami press conference. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're joined by head coach Jim Laranega. We have student athlete Sam Wardenberg, and we also have Cameron McGussie. We're going to ask coach for an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Well, I thought that was a great college basketball game by two uh, very good basketball teams, teams playing very well in a very high level. And the game sometimes comes down to some very, very simple things. In this case, it was free throw shooting, all right? They went 17 for 22, we went six for 12, all right? We normally are a um, 70 to 75% free throw shooting team and we missed some early. Uh, and that, that obviously uh, made a difference, but uh, our guys, uh, played as hard and as well as we possibly can. Uh, Duke is a terrific college basketball team, and uh, those guys played great. Uh, 29 for 58, they ended up shooting, uh, you know, 50% from the field and 77% from the foul line. That was the difference. If you have a question, please raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you. We're going to go to the right side of the room, second row. Cameron, 24 points on the night, seven rebounds. Is that is that something you can take home being happy about despite the loss? Um, honestly, I can't. Um, you know, I've been through a lot of my college career. I just want to win. You know, I've only been to the tournament one time. Um, never made it this far in the conference tournament. Um, they really broke my heart that uh, we couldn't get it done tonight. Um, our guys fight so hard. Um, we've been through a lot as a program, so um, the personal achievements and accolades don't really matter to me at this point. We're going to go to the middle of the room, to Michelle in the front row. All right. Sam, can you just talk about the mood of the team? I mean, to the outsiders would think, oh, they must be really proud. They got close to beating Duke. But, you know, what is the mood of the team right now, and how would you assess the game today? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, as Coach I said, two great teams fighting. Uh, it was a great college basketball game. Uh, big props to Duke for the way they pulled that out. Um, but, you know, none of our guys are putting our head down. You know, we, got, we know we have a lot more basketball to play. Uh, we'll see where we are at on Sunday, um, but you know we're going to get back to work and get ready for that. We're going to go back to the middle of the room. Hey Cam, uh, AJ Griffin only had ten points the first time you guys played him. He had twenty-one tonight. Knocked down a couple of late free throws. Got the last rebound to sort of seal the game. What was challenging about trying to defend him today? And you guys did a much better job in the second half and limiting some of the looks he was getting. Yeah, um, you know, he can really play all their guards and guys can really play. He's a great shooter. Um, he has a nice um, body and frame, strong, gets to the basket. You know, he's an all-around player. Um, he had a heck of a game. Um, he's definitely helped them out uh, in this second uh, half of the season and done a lot for them. So um, he's a great player. Credit to him and credit to his uh, teammates for getting him the ball. When you go back to the middle. Coach. Um, Duke's obviously super talented and has a little bit of size advantage on you like a lot of teams, but um, how would you rate your defensive performance in terms of the way you guys recovered off, per se, doubles on Boncaro and just the scramble that you guys like to play? Yeah, one of the adjustments uh, in this game, it was very, very hard to get as many traps on their ball handlers because they, they ran an offense. We actually run it too, but where they're sprinting off of ball uh, – uh, dribble handoffs and then the screen the screener is not standing still he's he's um, coming on the move so our guy had a hard time getting out there and trapping so late in the game we just decided just to switch but then that gives them the advantage the size advantage inside when our guards end up on their big guys and we end up fouling them and that's how they made all those free throws Normally, we'd, we would like to have turned turned them over more. They had 10 turnovers. You know, we would have preferred to be 15, 16 turnovers. That would have given us a much better chance to, to close out the game. When we got to the left side of the room, there we Yeah, hey, Cam. You know, early in the game, you guys were, you know, getting everything going offensively, really exploiting Duke on that end. What was working and what kind of changed in the second half down the stretch? Um, I think we came out with a lot of energy. Um, you know, they made some adjustments. Obviously, we got um, a couple steals. Sam got a steal and a dunk. Um, you know, it's just part of our uh, our defense and our identity, you know, but that's a basketball game, you know. Um, teams go on runs, they make adjustments, and, you know, that's the game. When you go to the back, right? 
sort of a follow-up to that question about the last five minutes. What allowed Duke to separate themselves from you at the end of the game? Um, I think they just made good plays down the stretch and made big free throws. You know, if they miss um, a couple of those free throws, you know, we have a chance to be in the game. But, you know, they're a great team. They, they execute well. They have a lot of discipline. Um, props to them. Front row on the right. Coach, uh, six of 12 from the line, and they out-rebounded you 40 to 31. Which of those two or both of them were the were keys? Well, the real critical things are the, are the free throws. The rebounding is part of our, you know, um, we're just not that big. They're so much bigger. A guy, a guy like uh, Mark Williams is three inches taller. He's long. He's heavy. But we have a hard time on those backboards. I think they got four offensive rebounds in the first two or three possessions. But what we've been able to counter that with is forcing turnovers. But today they, they, they handle the ball and they handle the pressure very, very well. We have a question here in the middle of the room on the second row. All right, we're gonna go to the right to the gentleman here. Coach, your team only shot 12 free throws from the line, whereas Duke shot 22. Did you have any issues tonight with how the referees were calling fouls? <laughs> Uh, I, I think I have a hard job. Ain't nearly as hard as being an official in that environment where everybody thinks they know if your calls are right or wrong. I got no problem with any officials at any time because they, they do a great job. And what, what we try to express to our players is, are, are they going to get every call right? No, we don't make every shot either. We make mistakes. Officials are bound to make mistakes. They're human. I, I would have liked for them to make a, f a few mistakes that helped us, but uh, I don't think that happened today. We've got a question here in the middle on the second row, the gentleman with the gray blazer. Coach, uh, do you think uh, Duke has the talent to win it all uh, in the NCAA tournament? And if so, why? Well, you answered your own question. They got perhaps the best talent in the country. I mean, I, 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 I follow the NBA pretty closely. My son's an assistant coach in the NBA, and I, I look at the NBA mock drafts and stuff like that. They're probably going to have five guys drafted, maybe two or three lottery picks. That, that's, that's pretty good talent, if you ask me. We're going to go back to the middle of the room to Connor. Coach, you beat Duke the first time. You played them down to the wire today. They're in the top 10 all season. You guys have been outside the rankings. Is there a perception problem with the league? And I know? definitely think so. I, the, the issue with our league, and I, I wish everybody could understand that we're much different than almost every other league because of the number of terrific, great talent we have in the younger classes that leave. And now you've got to start over again. So, like I said, Duke's going to have a bunch of guys drafted. Virginia's had, had a bunch of guys get go, go to the NBA. When you bring in new talent, especially transfers who played someplace else in a different system, you're trying to get them to adapt to your new system. You know, our transfers have done a fantastic job, Charlie Moore and Jordan Miller. But there have been some teams in our league that, that they had to bring in five transfers and then play them a bunch. You, you don't normally just do that and snap your fingers and they're going to be the team that they're going to become when you start the season in November. It takes you a month. And then during that month, you might lose a few games to even low major, mid major, quad four or quad three teams while you're making the adjustment because not only are the players making the adjustment, the coaches as well. And you say, well, don't other leagues have that? Yeah, but not like we do. We have 57 transfers coming to our league. It's like half the league is brand new. So it takes a little bit of time. And I hope, I hope the people who, who really make these decisions understand that because I, I, we, we face the teams in this league. Almost every one of our games has been like that. This is the 17th game decided in the last minute. Actually, maybe even even though the game ended up, what, four? If they miss a free throw, we have a chance to tie it. So it's like a one-possession game, except he made the free throw. 
when you go to the left side of the room to the third row. Coach, is there anything really different that you see in this Duke team now versus how they were in January when you first played? Oh, yeah, there's there's a bunch of differences. The, the main two in our observation is Jeremy Roach is playing really, really well right now, and A.J. Griffin is healthy and playing really well. When you have two of your best players who at the time we played them the first time, A.J. wasn't in sync yet. He had missed. I don't know if it was injury or COVID or something. But they had missed some some time, and now they are clearly in rhythm. You know the the basket that that Jeremy Roach at the end of the half, where he went coast to coast and laid it in. That's a hell of a basket, All right? And then AJ he got got him going in the first half. We were up. I don't know what did we lead by the most eight, and then AJ Griffin started. Well, those guys didn't do that back in January. Those other guys were terrific, but oh. Uh, They've added two really good weapons. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys. So that wraps things up with with Coach Laranega, Cameron McGusty, Sam Wardenberg. Yeah, just making sure. Yeah, coach is leaving the podium now. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go over. We'll, we'll get Coach K's thoughts. Um, I, I'm sure, like in this one, you heard a reporter ask about my uh, what what Larinaga thought about Duke. I, I'm sure Coach K will be asked about Miami, especially because where Miami's seated and the topic of conversation being, you know, the ACC does not have a lot of second tier after Duke. There's not a lot of teams after that that have that are projected to be high. Uh, seeded teams in the tournament, Miami included. Again, eight was the highest I've seen them. We will see how it all works out. Sunday night is when the reveal comes out. There's a few things I want to get to. If you have any questions, definitely drop in the comments below. Here's Coach K. We'll go right to him. And if it gets a little long, we can always switch off. So you go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. We're joined now by DK coach Mike Shevsky. We have student athletes, Paulo Bancaro, Malik, excuse me, Mark Williams, and AJ Griffin. We're going to ask coach for an opening statement, and then we'll take questions for the players, and then we'll dismiss the players, and then take questions from coach. Well, that, that was just a heck of a game. That was really a good basketball game. You know, right after, after uh, when Jim and I shook hands on the court, we both smiled at one another. Yeah, you know, we've done this hundreds of times, and uh, a, a good number are, are really good. This is a really good game. This is a game where both teams are worthy of winning. Uh, kids are making really good plays. You didn't win because somebody made a mistake, or you know you fumbled into something. Everything was earned tonight, and. Uh, so I'm proud of my guys. I, you know, they, you know, these three, the guys, my guys really played well. We started out and they almost knocked us out. Uh, the, the plan we had, uh, didn't work, uh, or was it, wasn't working, uh, defensively. And, uh, we weren't aggressive in the, in the plan we had, and that's on us, on, on the coaching staff, on me. And then we changed it and got back to playing our regular stuff. And uh, we were able to tie the game. AJ really gave us a 12 point spurt there. And he's done that a, a number of times this season. And we were able to score right at the end of the half and it was even. Although, you know, we could have been down uh, even double digits if we kept going. But we we right, and we did right the ship and, uh, and the second half was just back and forth. And we hit on a little thing we do and got some multiple looks and and got a little bit of a margin. And then I thought two of the key plays were the blocks when they had fast breaks. And our guys made magnificent plays on them, but we also turned them into a bucket. So there were two four point turnarounds during that time and they were flawless and free throws and execution so 
my guys, my guys did a great job to beat Jim's guys who did a great job. Our first question is going to come from the middle on second row to the right. Hey, Paulo, uh, I'm just curious, how much did you put it on your own shoulders coming into this game to set the tone, uh, you know, in terms of intensity? Um, uh, I only think, I just know that, you know, when I'm, when I'm intense and, you know, up and talking, you know, it just rubs off when we all are. Um, so when we was, when we went, when we went down early, you know, I just wanted to assert myself and, and be vocal and, you know, get, get everybody going. Um, and we just, we responded great, you know, AJ, like coach said, scored like 12 straight and then basically put us back in the game single-handedly. And then Jeremy went full court and got a layup at the end, and that gave us a lot of momentum. Um, but credit to Miami, you know, they, they didn't fold at all. You know, they had an answer um, every time. But, uh, yeah. Our next question will come from Michelle on the front row in the middle. Okay. Um, if I could ask AJ, do you think that uh, Miami is a little bit underrated sometimes? You guys have played them. They've been really tough both times. They haven't been ranked at all all season. Um. It's a mistake. You know, I think they're a, they're a tough team. You know, just we, we knew it was going to be a fight. And, you know, give, I, mean, I give credit to them. You know, we, we knew it was going to be a fight coming into the game. So, yeah, you, you, could, you could say they're underrated. You know, they're a really talented team. And, you know, they got a lot of great players on that team. So, yeah. We're going to go to the back right of the room. This is for AJ. What does it mean for you and the team to get to the ACC final and coach's final season? It's in their first, yeah, you know, which I'm trying to get away from all that. It's, it's really too much. It's their season. So it's all about them. It, 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 it is. And, uh, you know, I, we should, I don't want to be a distraction to them. This is their, their season, especially now. You know, especially now. Uh, they only get it once. I've had it numerous times it's all it's all theirs and i'm going to try to do my best to help them in their season all right i'm sorry to, i just could i just then you can answer yeah did i it, it'll be both of our questions it's good teamwork thank you <laughs> let's go to the middle of the room to brendan then uh this question is for aj coach told us you weren't feeling great yesterday may have eaten something funny can you just tell us how you were feeling yesterday it seems like you're feeling better now. How are you? And he wasn't feeling well today before the game. Can you can you sort of walk us through that and how you were able to when you may have started to feel like yourself a little bit more? Uh, I mean, you know, despite whatever circumstance, you know, uh, I'm just thinking about the game, you know, no matter how my body's feeling, you know, my teammates are counting me to, you know, do my part. And so, I'm, you know, I just want to win. And so, you know, I, I put on a line for everyone, you know, just and all glory to God, too, because, you know, being able to be uh, content in every single circumstance. And so, you know, just knowing how much it means to my teammates, too, you know, I would not want to miss it and just think of what if or something. Yeah. Let me go to Paul in the front row. AJ, even though I'm a Mount Vernon guy, it really made my heart feel good to see a local guy have a performance like that. Coming off the food sickness and not being yourself even today, as Coach said, how does it feel to have a game like that in your backyard? Um, I mean, it's a lot of fun, you know. And <laughs> pretty, pretty much doing it in New York, you know, my hometown, just having family here, just doing it in front of them, and seeing people who, you know, grew up watching me play. It, it, feel, it feels great. And, you know, just having my teammates out there too, just being able to, you know, just find me and, be 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 there be there to pick me up too on the court, you know. Not not feeling great. So them be here for me. I appreciate it a lot. And he didn't have his senior year, so you know, at Stepanak and play, I mean, they have a great. I know Mount Vernon has one too, but they have a great tradition. So uh, that's a heck of a thing for him. When he got to the left side of the room. Yeah. Hey, Paolo. You. It seemed like you guys needed a spark there early in the first half. I think you guys were down by eight or so. You stepped up there for a bunch of possessions in a row. What was working for you, and you know what gave you that that edge to just get going there? Uh, just 
trying to establish myself early, uh, just being aggressive. Um, really, that's all it was. I wasn't really, I was out there playing, um, just playing basketball, but doing it aggressively and, you know, with a lot of effort. So, I mean, that's really all that was to it. You know, I didn't really have a specific thing I was trying to do. I was just trying to go out there and, and be aggressive and, and play hard and, you know, get the lead. When you go to the right side of the room, third row. Well, I've got a call was asked after the game about who he wants tomorrow night. Is it, you know, UNC? And you talked after the game last week of disappointment. We're playing them tomorrow night. Just sort of the uh, a big, uh, big motivation after what happened last weekend. You know, like, well, I'm going to answer it. We'll be honored to play either team. You, you don't pick teams right now. They're getting ready to go to battle right now. I, I think it would be disrespectful, really. No, I'm not saying you're disrespectful for, for us to answer that that question. Yeah. We're going to go to Connor in the middle of the room. Mark, this is two games in a row where you guys have made a lot of plays down the stretch, and that's been an issue sometimes this season. What does it mean to do it in back-to-back -back games like this? <clears throat> uh, I think it means a lot. Uh, I think, you know, plays like that shows our growth as a team. Um, you know, those moments where we, you know, didn't make those plays or didn't convert. But now, you know, later in the season, we're making those plays, you know, making the right decisions or whatever it may be. Uh, I think it's just a testament to just, you know, our hard work and perseverance throughout the season. One or two more questions for the student athletes before we dismiss them. Let's go to Steve in the middle. Well, uh, the coach has said you guys can even play very well defensively against Carolina. And then yesterday, early today, it was kind of a struggle. What what flipped the switch for you guys? What, how did you play so much better the rest of the game to get that win? Um, I think just keep going at it. Uh, I think, you know, we never backed down. Uh, you know, obviously, they were making some tough shots throughout the game. Um, you know, obviously, they're a good team. Um, you know, they're going to make plays. But I think just for us to, you know, keep playing, keep battling, and just doing that so the clock hits zero. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys. We're going to dismiss the student athletes, and then we'll take questions for Coach. All right. Got some fluids. Do you have a question for Coach in the second row? Okay, we'll go to the middle in the second row. Coach, you guys played uh, here in New York City in November. How has uh, Powell improved as a player, improved as a person uh, from then to now? Well, yeah, what's our record? We're, we played 33 games. So when we played the last time, it was his first game. We played pretty well on that. But uh, I think one of the main things is integrating his talents with the talents of the other guys and remembering that our, we, have, we have a lot of, we have young guys. So the talents that we had uh, in November are different now. Our, Every one of our players is a different player. And Paulo is a different player, too. I think he's uh, a stronger player, a tougher player. Uh, he's even as good a teammate as he was then. He's, he's an amazing teammate. And, uh, and they all have meshed together well. Uh, and, you know, Paulo... Uh, has gotten most of the attention during the year because of draft status and that. And really he, that's never been a problem. You know, there's no jealousy or, uh, and because he's such a good guy and he's such a good uh, teammate. We're gonna go to the middle of the room, to the back. Coach, congrats yeah. on the win today. Um, you've gotten two great battles so far in this tournament from Syracuse and Miami gotten good battles from a lot of teams in this league this season, yet according to the computer metrics, according to the, the bracketologist, this is a very down year for the ACC. Um, what would be your pitch or your argument for to kind of reverse that narrative that there are a lot of good teams in this league? Yeah, well, you know, anytime you, you do it just numerically, uh, you, you, you give weight and that weight stays, you know, the, like it's all numbers, right? It really is. There's no eye test. And uh, so like Miami, look, Miami can beat anybody. You know, Miami's, uh, Miami's gonna be in the tournament at, with some seed. Uh, they can play. I mean, they can really play. They have five guys. 
And what happens, teams improve just like kids improve. Like a big thing for Miami is how Miller's playing. The last four or five games, he's been their leading scorer. What do you have? 17 and 13 tonight. You know, everyone talks, and McGusty's the first team all ACC. You have a center who doesn't play in the center who had seven assists and no turnover. They have a pro, they have a pro offense. They're going to be really difficult to defend. Carolina's playing lights out, you know. Uh, Virginia Tech, what a turnaround they've, they've had. Yeah, I still think Wake Forest can beat anybody in our league. Yeah, they're so big. I mean, we have a good league, but because we did not have a good non-conference, those numbers, you could never change those numbers. And so the numbers playing against each other, if you get good numbers, I'm fairly good in math, not well, not good in English. If you get not good numbers in your non-conference for a conference teams, then playing each other gives you better numbers. Does that make sense? If you do not have good numbers and you play each other, even though those teams are really good, you don't get the good numbers. That's to me the fallacy in, in, in it. it uh, I think that's my experience in it. Usually the ACC benefits from that because we usually have a great, and so you can get nine, 10 teams in because, you know, like wins, wins against four or five different teams produce good numbers for you. Are you tired of me talking about numbers? Okay. But I, really, if you take a look at it that way, you have no way of changing that. You have no, you know, so the, we're going to only play our conference teams. Just like the Big Ten will only play their conference teams. And, that, and you got to do well in a non-conference. And we didn't do well in the non-conference and we're paying a price for it. But uh, I just wish there was a little bit different way of looking at the whole thing. When you go to the back left of the room. Mike, you mentioned for a lot of these guys, they have one shot at this. Yeah. You, you used to not be that way. You're, you, the progression of a kid's career was over 120 games, not over 35. Right. Like how, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> how, how is that? changed how do you how did you adjust to that what, what's the different different about it yeah well it's hugely different because you know we we have the benefit and the burden of our past so when we start out they're expected to be a veteran team and so they get more they get a lot of praise and they, have, they get a lot of criticism in their growth period like you know John Shire, who's going to be the next really good coach uh, for Duke, in his freshman year, we got beat by VCU. You know, we, we got killed by Villanova's junior year in the NCAA tournament. They were able to go through things so that when they were in that year, they had already learned. These guys have to learn along the way while still carrying the banner. And so it's, it's difficult. And then this year, especially towards the end, it started being my farewell thing, which I, I don't want it. it. It comes about, it sells tickets, and it, uh, but I don't want it. You know, I, I just want them to win because it's my, my, my only shot with them. And, uh, and they're getting better, you know, they're, they're good. We, we have good kids and they're getting better. I don't, I don't know where we'll, what'll happen tomorrow night or whatever. And, but we should be a real high seed. And, and hopefully, the, especially from these two games, and we'll learn from tomorrow's game, no matter what. This team really needs that. Really needs that because they didn't have it. They, they didn't have it. So uh, but that's how we've tried to uh, adjust. When you go to Brendan in the middle. Hey coach, speaking of getting better, Jim said that the biggest difference that he noticed between the first time you guys played and tonight was 
Jeremy's evolution and the way he's playing right now and, and AJ becoming more integrated in the offense. Do you agree with that? And I, I don't want to ask you to get into the, the gritty details of AJ yesterday, but um, how did you see him respond over the course of the 24 hours to be able to do what he did? Yeah, well, we're going to get better because they're good kids and they work hard. When we played them the last time, too, we were it's like five or six days after we had our stoppage and 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 they weren't they were good, but they weren't as good as they are now because they were winning real close games and they're still winning close games because they have people who can do that. But uh, AJ's evolution it, it, it is amazing because he didn't play for two years and then he got hurt in October and was out a couple of weeks. And there, Jeremy, I think, just is keep evolving you know he's not that one and done guy and he may at some time be early but uh i think his is more of a natural growth too and i i credit these guys because they they really love one another they they like one another you know by interviewing them and that so they're never they're not envious of one another so they have fertile soil to grow because they're never looking around like who's who's trying to do this or whatever. So, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I said, I wish they would be smarter. And, you know, the last two games, they've been, they've been very smart. They've been really smart. And our last question will come from the left side of the room. Hey, Coach, what have you noticed in Mark's two years of his defensive development? And I don't necessarily mean as a shot blocker, but more so as a big that can play with 32 minutes against such a guard-heavy lineup. Yeah, well, it, it, because he's going to be a pro, and he can do that. That's what those got. So lateral movement. His lateral movement has increased tremendously, and that's on him and our medical, our, our sport, you know, Nick Potter and Jose. Uh, our strength coach, he works all the time and with Emil and, and Chris Carowell, lateral movement, and he's gotten stronger. He's really got, gotten stronger. Uh, uh, I'm uh, very proud of him. And today, he was having a tough time early and because we haven't played. And then he, you can tell when your team's getting better when they can make in-game adjustments not just X's and O's, but with how you're playing. You're not playing real well now. Okay, what am I doing wrong? How can I improve? And th that maturity, he's, he's really become a very mature and tough, tough guy. He's a really good basketball player. And he's going to get keep getting better because he's going to keep getting stronger. And but he's a good athlete. You know, and that what anyway, the, it's lateral movement. Yeah, you know, his feet are wider. That's why he can stay in front. He's keeping down. Yeah, you know, he did a he did a good job, and he, he's rebounding. You know, he's going outside of his area. Yeah, you know, he did that in the last game of last year when we beat Louisville, and it took him a while to get back to doing to do, doing that. But he, he's there. Okay, thank you. Thanks Seven. so much, Coach. That's okay. all the time we have. So that wraps up the the press conference. We we did go a little longer on Duke. We we actually watched the whole thing together. So shout out to you guys for sticking with me here and, and watching that. Lots to get into it um, with this, but like both coaches said, they they both feel real comfortable and real confident in the ACC. I touched on some numbers there in the chat about how these teams are playing of late, particularly Virginia Tech, one of those interesting teams. Big game coming up tonight uh, with, with Virginia Tech and North Carolina in the other semifinal game. Definitely drop in the comments. Who do you think is going to win this thing? Miami played tough. You know, they did. They Coach K has always said good things about Jim Laranega's teams, and he said it earlier in the year, and you heard him here. And, and you know, a lot of coaches see what Miami is. They've, they're a team that, once again, like I said at the beginning of this postgame show, Miami's strengths are really good. You know, they, they, when they play that way, when they, you know, they're tough to guard. They're, and you saw it early in this game. Miami jumps out to an 18-7 lead out of the gate. Four three-pointers, two by Charlie Moore, 
McGusty hits one, as well as Anthony Walker comes in off the bench. And I thought he gave a couple good buckets there with the three. He had that nice little jump hook as well in the first half. But And, and that's what's going to be interesting with the matchups moving forward. Coach K mentioned there, he's always said this, uh, a lot of positive things about Sam Wardenberg over the years. I remember writing an article years ago about it, and he mentioned him again today. And I think Sam's just a much better player today than he was. I mean, this is just the best basketball he's been playing. And certainly I remember watching some film on him uh, with his New Zealand team, you know, before he really got going at Miami. And there were some things with his pass, uh, his passing abilities that stood out. And Coach K mentioned seven assists for Wardenberg and just a big performance there for him. They You heard there they run a lot of actions out with Sam. He's very important. You know, he's not a guy that hand, dribbles the ball a lot to find open guys. He's just a good passer, and he and he gets the ball to the right guys, and he's certainly important. We touched on Jordan Miller having an, another big game. Um, you know, one of the things, kind of switching to Jordan, you know, his dunking ability, we've seen that throughout the year. It's been fun to watch, but his, his touch around the rim, and we touched on the offensive rebound stuff last game, you know, and he finished with five offensive boards today. The tips are really good, but just his overall uh, sense on how to score down low, and he did that tonight against Bancaro and Mark Williams, two big guys, still able to finish around the rim, does a good job with using the basket to kind of shield uh, the defender's ability to block shots, and he finishes just with that left hand. He's just a very good finisher and, and certainly really important for this team moving forward, and I found it, even though Miami lost tonight, and disappointed, and I remember the questions early on to the, the Miami players and McGusty. Of course, McGusty. Look, this team, these guys have been around college basketball too long. They want to finish on a high note. They want to win every game they 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 play in. The the you know there there's no sense on on oh they played well or McGusty had 24 in a losing effort. How does he feel about it? I know how these guys are going to answer. They're not happy with this and they're going to stay positive. But they feel like they can beat anybody. And this happened early on in the year where they had the confidence that they could. And they've already beat Duke. So this isn't one of those things where they're gaining um, a, a lot from a loss. They're disappointed that they're in a position where they feel like they can make a run. They, they feel like they can win games in the NCAA tournament. And when we talk about Miami's strengths, that's what's going to come up big time in that first opening weekend. The first game is how they match up. And you're going to look at Miami. Oh, they don't have the size, right? But if you flip it to the other team, what Miami has, the the other teams are going to have to defend that, and that's what we've heard all throughout the year. We heard Coach K tonight. We've heard other coaches throughout the year talk about how difficult it is to guard Miami, and you heard it too, like just with the amount of guys that can make plays. McGusty off the dribble, Isaiah Wong, tough game tonight. I'll, I'll get into him in a second, but Charlie Moore as well. Those three guys that handle the ball you know, do a great job of, of scoring buckets, not just for themselves, but looking for others. Isaiah Wong goes one for 11, disappointing to have this kind of performance. He does finish with seven points. He did make four, all four of his free throws late when they needed possess, and it happened in the final two minutes. So that was great to see. One of the things I was looking at was he led the team in plus minus somehow out of plus 11 when he was on the floor which is an impressive stat considering he was one for 11 out there. So he was still a factor. There were some times some of them were contested, um, you know, just did not have a good game. And um, obviously you would have liked to, him to play better. Miami's at its best when Wong and Magusti are scoring points in that 15 to 20 point range. And it just didn't happen for him tonight. I, I expect him to bounce back. He's had, kind of single digit games like this before but he's bounced back so I expect him to bounce back and he's just a really good player overall so I don't expect this to really linger and the way got the way he works you know he's gonna certainly want to bounce back so tough one overall for him there were some things defensively that they did you know they're always paying attention to Isaiah on dribble drives he has a lot of attention on him you know uh, with what he did last year with what he did this year as a scorer People know how to defend him. He's at his best when he's going to the basket, although he's been able to add that step back three to his arsenal here, and he missed all three of his three point attempts. So, not a good, not a good game for him overall. But you know, I don't expect it to continue. And obviously, he's a big factor. And there were times he went to the bench a little bit. He did deal with some foul stuff. 
he did end up falling out late. But um, yeah, t- tough one overall for Isaiah. I want to go back to the split box here. We touched on the points in the paint. You know, it felt like Duke could score anytime they will. And this felt like this in the first time they played. And even Bancaro, it was early on in the game where I felt like it it seemed like he was going to score 25 this game. And he does go 8 for 10. But, but they you know, only 10 shot attempts. So you'll take that. He played 38 minutes. The 44 points in the paint, disappointing. Miami does have 34 on their own. So they were doing a good job getting to the paint, even though they both teams get it in different ways with Miami driving. Um, getting in that way and some stuff in transition a little bit there too. Oh, coach mentioned, um, you know, and you guys know how Miami is in rebounding. We've talked about that a lot. He was asked about rebounding, getting out rebounded. And he said, usually they make up rebounding with, with some turnovers. Duke did finish with 10 turnovers. You know, it's worth mentioning Duke had seven of those in the first half. So just three in the second half. So Miami wasn't able to kind of get some turnovers to get back into the game or at least flip it over to get over the hump to get the lead back. Um, I thought some more turnovers would have helped that, but it's tough. And you saw it, and Coach talked about it too, when they were switching off of things, and it just made some mismatch issues there. And once again, it's just not a good – it's not an ideal matchup for Miami in this one because of how big Duke can go. But Miami was in it, and they beat them already this year. So I thought it was good that Miami showed that they can still use their strengths – to their advantages and they can stay in games when it looks like at times teams can run away from them. So I think that's important. I touched on the stats there. Jeff's here. Shout out to you and also Dennis and Joey for being here throughout the whole thing. But Jeff mentioned how good Miami's been on the road. And I think that's a key stat moving forward. 10 and two true road games, three and three neutral site games. So Miami's going to be going into the NCAA tournament, 13 and five away from home. Obviously they'll be away from home in the tournament just like other teams. And I think that'll be a big factor, you know, just to be able to do that. They should feel comfortable or as comfortable as you can be when you play on the road uh, tournament team. Miami does have some guys with tournament experience, you know, just guys that played for Miami in the last tournament games uh, or in the tournament in general. Wardenburg played in the last one there in 18. Rodney Miller has played in a tournament game for Miami as well. And then just kind of a couple other guys, Charlie Moore and Cam Mcgusty, are, are guys that have played in the tournament. So they do have some experience in the tournament. It's just been a while. So we'll see how, the, how everybody adjusts. And it's an adjustment for everybody, whoever they play against. Let's see here. I, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. It's been a long show. It's been a long day um, up early uh, with the football team there. So, oh, I do want to check in. Um, with the baseball team here, and not to just uh, go completely over, but Miami's down 12-6 in the seventh inning to Boston College. Disappointing performance. Carson Palmquist got rocked tonight, so not a good one for the baseball team. Uh, and because you guys are here, I know you're diehard uh, fans. Uh, I'm working on some football videos that I'll post to the channel moving forward. Also, I'm definitely excited to cover this team moving forward the, for the tournament. Hopefully I can get some interviews with the reporters like I've done with the football stuff. Um, whoever they play against in that first round. So definitely be on the lookout for that. Also let you guys know, I was able to do a really exciting interview. Personally, I was able to do an interview I was really excited about, and I think you guys will too. So definitely stay tuned in the channel in the next few days or so. But certainly a lot more coming, a lot more on this team. You know, Miami again, they lose 80-76, to 23-10 and 10 overall. Started out 4-30. And, you know, so definitely they turned the season around. It did not look good early. Like Coach K mentioned, you know, a lot of teams struggled kind of in the non-conference in the ACC, and there's really no way to make it up. We will see how that plays out. But even if these teams in the ACC do not get high seedings in the tournament, if they feel like they've got a good team or a good conference and it's underrated, that's when you show it. You show it in the NCAA tournament. You'll get matched up against teams once again, outside your conference, and we'll see how much they have improved. It's a great proving point, even if the matchups are not favorable in terms of seeding. You've got an opportunity to knock teams off. Okay, I'm going to let you guys go. I want to shout out again to everybody for being here. Thanks again. We will do another one soon um, at some point, but definitely stay locked in on the channel. Thanks again. Have a good rest of the weekend, and take care. Oh, and also, 
enjoy the rest of the games Saturday with championship games and the conference. Definitely check out these teams and the North Carolina Virginia Tech game. I know it's going to be disappointing not seeing Miami in the ACC t- championship game, but definitely if you guys are filling out brackets, watch that game and 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 then definitely get your own thoughts on what you think of those two teams, whoever's in it. Certainly Duke UNC would be fun to watch again, but the way Virginia Tech's been playing as well. So, all right, I'll let you go on that. We'll talk to you guys later.